There are four keys to provoking divine intervention. Every time you are in a situation where you need the help of heaven urgently, do these four things and you will change the tides in a way that will surprise you. Listen, brothers and sisters, as you learn these mysteries, please use them. Don't be too big to use them. Be childlike and apply them. You will be surprised. These are not cunningly divine fables. These are things that I do myself. They are not necessarily things I'm just telling you just for, for, you know, just the sake of it. The first thing to do when you are in need of strange intervention is engage in the ministry of prayer. Number one, please quickly, prayer. I'll give you two scriptures and then we'll, we'll be able to look at two. Write it down, please. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11 talks about Peter. Don't, don't project it. I just want to hurry up. In Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11, the Bible tells us how that James was caught by Herod. He was beheaded. And when it pleased the Jews, he now caught Peter and locked him. And then the Bible says the brethren began to pray. Whilst they began to pray, an angel came into the prison, brought Peter out. Peter even thought he was having a vision until he took him out and then Peter was free. We see that prayer was part of the instruments that were used, was used to bring strange and divine intervention. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11. Please write this down. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34. It's a long reading. Don't project it. Just write it down. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34. This was um, a scenario where Paul casted out the demon from the lady that was using divination to prophesy. And then the people got angry and they mobbed them. You know, and then the Bible says that they chained them and they were kept under the custody of a jailer. Then the Bible says Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. And the Bible says everyone in the prison heard them. All of a sudden there was an earthquake and then the bible says the things broke and all doors open i like that all doors it didn't say some doors when the chain broke all doors the doors of the prison of other people connected to them also open all doors open prayer can open doors james chapter 5 verse 13 maybe you can project that he said is any of you afflicted let him pray prayer is the re biblical recommendation for affliction if any of you afflicted he said let him pray so whenever you are afflicted the key is to pray you may not know what to do i'm teaching you what to do now but regardless of what the situation is pray especially engaging in the spirit the most the most sound way to engage warfare prayers especially is to pray in the spirit first as you pray in the spirit the holy spirit begins to construct the scriptures in your mind you will not utter them just as words you will utter them as prophecies that's what we live to bring the result so the first key is not just to start talking uh, you take out time and pray in the spirit that's why it is important to be filled with the holy ghost with a clear evidence of praying in tongues it's not a phenomenon for Pentecostals there is a dimension of victory you will never be able to command are we blessed is any among you afflicted has any of you received a bad report has any of you been told that you have so 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 time to live has any strange spirit appeared to anybody and said you will not see Christmas so when others are rejoicing don't join them the key is not to get up and cry has any stranger come to you while you sleep and try to molest you and you just got up and said this thing has come again no sir has the door for close towards you so the people who used to help you suddenly have changed the people who used to like you suddenly have changed the doors that used to bring you blessings have changed something is suddenly happening to your spiritual life prayer zero word life zero you need an intervention prayer the scripture i want us to read now is psalms 18 never forget this scripture It's one of the arsenals that i have for my personal um it's a scripture that has blessed me i have prayed this scripture 
if if this scripture was a shoe by now i would have maybe the soul would have eaten into pieces i'm giving you a piece of my secret place psalm 18 don't ever forget that scripture don't ever forget it for as long as you live if you are a leader going far this is a chief tool that you need we are going to read from verse 1 to 6 then i'll pick for you the verses we are reading it's a long verse ready please give it to us one to six i will love thee O lord my strength the lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer listen my god my strength in whom i will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower i will call upon the lord i will do what call upon the lord in prayer who is worthy to be praised so by calling upon him shall i be saved from my enemies verse 4 the sorrows of death compass me this is a man in trouble and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid the sorrows of hell compass me about the snares of death prevented me in my distress hallelujah i didn't discuss it with people who cannot help me i called upon the lord and cried upon unto my god he heard my voice from out of his temple and my cry came before him even to where even to his ears there is a kind of cry that enters the ears of the mighty god let's jump to verse 14 then to 17 then 40 to 45 it's a quick reading verse 14 yeah he sent out his arrows god has arrows so hey look up i learned this i was checking arrows you know arrows that fly by day and then i found out that it's not only the devil god the bible says yeah this is him intervening for me these are part of the forces from his cabinet of judgment that he can release he says he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out light things and discomfited them 17 please give us 17 he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me verse 40 Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemy that I may destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. 42. We are really reading to 48. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind, and did cast them out of the dirt in their streets. 43. Oh dear, media. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of my people, and thou hast made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. Pastor, you need this for your ministry. Oh. When you open a branch in a locality that you don't know, there are people who need to come and as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves to me. 45 verse 45 the stranger shall shake, fade away and be afraid out of their close places now 47 to 48 is a scripture i don't want you to ever forget ready go ahead give us well go to 47 go to 47 it is god that avenged me and subdued the people under me who did it who did it he says it is God that avenged me and subdued the people under me. 48. He delivered me from my enemies. Yea, thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Divine intervention. As a man of God, there are wicked forces day and night to destroy you. As a leader, there are wicked forces. But when you catch this and catch the revelation, you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And the Lord will be with you mysteriously. You will not travel and sit down and be shaking. Will a car jam me? Will it break my leg? Will it break my head? No, sir. 
rest and quietness on the strength of scripture everybody say prayer. prayer we need to learn how to call upon the lord listen do you know most people don't know how to call upon the lord they know how to lament hey oh you are not calling upon the lord you are shouting a lamentation a, a strategy for lamentation that you inherited he said unto thee oh lord do i lift up my soul oh my god let me not be ashamed though let not my enemies triumph over me there is a way you can pray with god sometimes like anna you can't even shout it's not something you you just lie down and say oh god oh god deliver me from the shame of the wicked there are enemies that are waiting to see you fail so that it will be their prophecy fulfilled lord confound their their counsel and god will say it got to my ear i had it i'm on my way coming prayer number two the second key when you want to activate the mystery of divine intervention is to engage praise with understanding praise 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 as an instrument of warfare and praise as an instrument of faith praise as an instrument of warfare but that you are blessing him in advance listen this revelation is fast becoming a national anthem in the body of christ people are suddenly coming to the realization that praise can work wonders you know people don't know why the presence of god is still mighty in africa it's because africa is a praising continent yes yes sir yes sir they laugh at us and think that when we are dancing is nonsense praise is a mystery you want to turn around your situation no matter what you do if you have not praised there is no lord believe me lord give us understanding psalm 22 verse 3 it says thou art holy thou that inhabitest the praise of zion God makes the praise of men his habitation. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Joshua Selman. Listen, I've taught us how to praise. You don't praise God without dancing. That, that is nonsense. You are, you are singing a national anthem. It's when you are reciting national anthem that you stand and put your hand on your chest moving your body is not a sign of it's not you are not you have problems you can cry but still praise are we together is this is a it's a powerful mystery i want you to learn our father bishop david Oedeko, when he almost had a few weeks ago he almost had a plane crash that would have taken his life as soon as that happened they declared praise i said oh dear spiritual intelligence let me tell you what other people would have done they would have organized a cocktail party and said you know we and the devil, the devil said that's i'm coming back praise praise is one of the most powerful ways to disgrace the devil because you see let me tell you one of depression is the absence of laughter and joy satan uses when people are about to die there are few people who die smiling most people are depressed then they keep quiet it says that the joy of the lord shall be your strength so when there is no joy your spirit becomes broken and the bible says a broken spirit dryeth the bones you don't praise god when things are going well you praise god to make them go well listen you don't praise God when, when things are going well and you praise God. It's called thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the dance you give and the testimony you give when things have manifested. But before they manifested, it's called perfected praise. Praise with understanding. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. You are exalted as the Lord most high. Hold on. Listen. Let me tell you what Satan will tell you. 
the moment you sing that he will tell you is it not your sister that just died is it not five carryovers we are seeing or god did they not just sack you ah the gentleman that has been promising to marry you is it not by 8 a.m this morning he says it's not doing again the devil brings it because he knows you see satan knows that we function in the realm of the flesh the senses are we together now so he brings things that resonate with your senses when you see them you are now depressed but that's the time anytime you are praising god satan says why are you praising him say no reason i'm praising him to create my testimony you see that listen corporate dancing and praising is good but you must learn to do this thing alone if it means you trusting god to get one small room for yourself for the purpose of praise is worth it oh is worth it reserve the forty thousand for shoes and use it to pay for a small room put worship wake up in the night because there is personally me i don't have time to do that dance and praise in the afternoon all kinds of calls distracting in the night oh dear oh dear ask god what i do in the night yes yes sometimes i carry koinonia documents drop it on the ground dance before it and shame the devil i carry my phone put it there I'm not dancing before them I say, Lord, you are great. I dance before you. People are coming from everywhere. Rain or no rain. Publicity or no publicity. And God says, you are doing this for me. I say, Lord, who else will I do it for? And you are celebrating him. Lord, you are faithful. And you are worshipping him. You are sweating like a fool. And while you are doing that, God is dispatching angels. Okay? Make sure you wake that guy to transfer money to his account. That hundred thousand I gave you, I didn't tell you who to send it to. Send it to him. Oh, his mother is at home. For giving birth to him, send an angel there too. And my innocent mother is lying down. She'll wake up in the morning and say, Mama, where are you? Say, who are you? Say, just come. Take my praise. This our big manism has cheated us beyond imagination. This pride that you don't have results and you are still talking you know ah I, how can okay i agree that you can't you think i can dance look at me you think no 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 god i don't have that gift of dancing it's not a competition this is your destiny this is breakthrough if a thief puts a gun and says you should dance won't you do something some of us when we were in the world you know the kind of dance demonic satanic dance that you did for the devil for free that destroyed you you got drunk dancing it a spirit entered you dancing it i'm not saying you should dance all kinds of nonsense dance in the house of god but i'm saying that there are times you need to learn to sing and dance alone with listen listen most people dance you can turn your dancing time to a nightclub and god will look at you and say you are wasting your time it is the revelation that makes the singing and the dancing profitable don't just move your body around just because you are happy that, that's that's entertainment brothers and sisters there is the kind of dance that you dance with tears in your eyes but you are doing it with understanding don't think you will only always be laughing are you hearing what i'm saying yes no job for you no job for your wife no job for your five children they are all graduates you have prayed oh nothing happened brothers and sisters try singing and celebrating god everyone in their room rejoicing jesus you are full and you are just dancing let me tell you what will happen the lord will start bringing testimonies remember when a cow would have killed you in 1995 and you say lord i remember oh, and you start dancing it you are you are compressing doubt because something is about to be created you would dance and dance till you fall under the anointing there and get up and clean yourself and be tired and sleep and wake up and drag yourself brothers and sisters you have programmed something in the spirit you will get up in the morning and just dress and say father thank you and get a phone call who is this 
I'm seeing a document that has been here four years on my table. Who are you? So I finished for what did you read? Anyway, it's not what you read. Where are you? Come quickly. I like you. Ha! You just know that praise is working. Praise is working. Let the people praise me. Psalm 67 verse 5 to 7. Let the people praise me. It's an instruction. The earth has been programmed to deliver certain results, but let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 6. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. You can stop there. Zephaniah. It may be difficult for some of us to find, but just write. Media, please give it to us. Zephaniah chapter 3. Let's read 14 to 20. I hope we can just quickly hurry up. Zephaniah. Chapter 3. Zephaniah. Chapter 3 and verse 14. We're reading to verse 20. Listen. It says, sing, O daughter of Zion. It's not talking about a lady. It's talking about human beings. You must read the Bible prophetically. When he says daughter, find out what he means. There are times in the Bible, all people are sons. There are times all people are daughters. Are we together? So don't think he's talking to ladies. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart. O daughter of Jerusalem. We're reading to verse 20. The Lord had taken away thy judgments and has cast out thine enemy the king of israel even the lord is in the midst of thee thou shalt not see evil anymore in that day it shall be said to jerusalem fear thou not and to zion let not thine hands be slack we're reading to verse 20. give us 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. Singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Who are of thee. To whom the reproach of it was a burden. Verse 19. Behold at that time. I will undo all that afflict thee and I will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out. I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Hmm. At that time, I will bring you again even in the time that I will gather you for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes say the Lord you read that scripture and say Lord whether you understand it or not I am dancing with this revelation that you are turning something I can see everything hey, hey. Do you see everything? I can see everything. One more time. Can see everything turning around. Please sit down. When you go back home, continue. 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 Apostle, I don't have a house. Find a tree. Find somewhere. It is a place that will give you a house, my brother. I'm staying with neighbors. I don't want to disturb them. Find somewhere. Behind one rock. You don't have to shout and disturb the neighborhood. Just engage in praise. Glorify God. You may be tired, but it's called a sacrifice of praise. Brothers and sisters, do this and see how things will turn in your life. There's nothing the devil can do with someone who is full of joy and glory. This gloominess that you see people tie their face around, it doesn't bring breakthrough. It adds to your sorrow. You loosen up and say, Father, you are faithful. You are tying your face around and people say, why are you? Why should I not tie my face? Or will you pay my rent for me? My brother, it's praise that will pay that rent. So you turn everything and rejoice. Let me tell you what many people will say who see you engaging this. 
I say, don't mind all these men of God. They are turning you people to be stupid. You see that? But when you meet them for rent, they won't give you. If you want God's result, follow his methods. Number three, quickly. The third key to activating the mystery of divine intervention is called seed faith. Say after me, seed faith. Listen, I know that giving has been abused. Listen carefully, please. Outside, online, listen carefully. I know that giving has largely been abused because it has looked like some manipulation and journalists and bloggers have not done justice because they have mixed everything and made it look like giving and sacrifice is some gimmicks to corner money and give a man of God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Something I do all the time, including today. Every time you are in a situation, listen please. Every time you are in a situation that only God can step in with understanding, having prayed, package a seed, speak to that seed and give it an instruction. And sow that seed. Release. If you just sow money, it's bribery. It's not the money. Revelation. The Bible is full of the potent power of seed faith. Connecting your faith with a seed and a sacrifice to provoke God's hand for intervention. I've done it countless times on behalf of this ministry. I've done it countless times on behalf of myself, my family, my friends, people I love. Seeds. The seed that is in your hand can create a destiny that will surprise you if you know what to do with it. Please listen to me. Don't think I'm asking you to give me money. No. There are people who when they hear this, they just frown their face. Not at all. Not at all. God has been faithful to me. Are we together? Listen. There are people who have turned their lives around overnight. If there is one thing I know in my little walk with God is that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent. I promise you. I have seen people quarter to shame. Everything was against them. It was obvious they are finished. And they used their seed and turned the hands of life in a way that you cannot imagine. My life is full of sacrifices. Psalm 126, don't turn there. Verse 1 to 6, you write it. That when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. The first six verses. The, la the sixth verse ends by saying, they that sow in tears. The whole verses are connected. Verse 6 is connected to verse 1. God turning away the captivity of Zion like a dream. It says that they that sow in tears will reap in joy. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, the Bible says, shall doubtless return rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. It's not every seed. To be cheerful does not mean to laugh. To be cheerful means that there be a merriment in your heart. There are some times you will cry for the seed you sow. Hallelujah. Someone came over to my place today and the Lord instructed him to bring me a seed. And quite a very serious seed. Just, you know, a military officer just came, dropped the seed. And when I saw it, the seed was in dollars. I said, wow, in this recession, this seed and the lord told me no 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 no. make sure you don't touch it this is your seed for something and the lord told me i started dancing i said thank you jesus this is it when god gives you seed to sow is intervention no? getting the seed to sow is an act of god's mercy that you say lord i must provoke this but i have no seed then he gives seed to the sower those who know only know how to eat anything plus their destiny, they keep getting bread. But those who want to create a future. Brothers and sisters, I have created realities in my life with seeds. I believe in the power of a seed. Listen, don't let people, because of their cynicism, 
the imbalance when a man creates an imbalance in scripture you don't avoid that truth because it has been abused you bring it to context and teach people brothers and sisters a seed can change your life believe me i have done crazy things in my life i thank god that is only god that reveals that that is only god that knows the heart of men there are things if i tell you that i have done with seeds some of you you are not related to me but you will be angry you will remove your shoe and stone me with it and say you are very stupid in this recession seeds there was a year i've shared it again and again that god gave us an instruction we were just resuming koinonia and god gave an instruction he said so everything 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 i don't mean small so everything let it go i said thank you jesus you are ready to lift us that is revelation by faith abel offered you offer by faith you don't offer by by tricks and all kinds of no 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 and we release it brothers and sisters it didn't reach seven days seven days more than ten times that amount came seeds i'm not saying you should give carelessly no but brothers and sisters the seed that is in your hands can silence a spirit that has destroyed your destiny for years nobody is moving forward in your family you are just sitting down and god is saying look you have to provoke heavens with a sacrifice one day you get angry and say lord i am tired of this anna did not have money to give but she said lord let's do it give me the child I've given the child already as a seed and God said it's a done deal. There was a king in the Bible who they wanted to slaughter and defeat. It was very clear the nation of Israel would defeat them and he carried his son, his future and slew the child. The Bible says an indignation rose up to heaven. Battle ended. When God wanted to redeem man, it was an issue of urgency. God carried Jesus, the lamb upon the throne, slew him. Jesus cried and God said, that's not the issue. Man must be saved. This greed over the little we have is what has destroyed us. Get used to money leaving you to go and wait for you in your future. Get used to it. You may not have a seed but brothers and sisters let me tell you there are many ways to give money is not the only seed it's just the seed that can easily be exchanged that's why there are times that people have made radical sacrifices do you believe what i'm teaching you principles of divine intervention trace your life at the moment where god gave you specific instructions that you did things that almost brought tears from your eyes and watch what happened you just did not study it enough to know how to keep it going mm. i hardly share my testimonies i stopped because i found out that it annoys a lot of people and i'm not ready to attract unnecessary um you know people once they hear preachers talk there are people who just get angry just like that it's nonsense brothers and sisters learn to sow seeds but the most powerful part of sowing seeds is to give them instructions this is the mistake many of us have been making you package a seed some of you come and join the line apostle here is a seed i'm sowing i always ask people what is this for and the people say for nothing just i just feel like seeing you that's a donation that's a donation brothers and sisters all seeds are not the same there is a seed you give to the poor there is something it does to you there is a seed that you give to widows and orphans there is a kind of result there is a seed you put on the ground because you are tired of where you are if the word of god were a lie i would have died since because the risk i've taken with this word it would have killed me since but I believe him. I believe him. 
When I saw that seed today, I was happy. The joy that filled my heart. I await the testimony that comes from it. Wanting a harvest that you have not scheduled to sow in is a waste of time. It's, imagine now, somebody who didn't go to the farm. He has a land somewhere. He just carries his wife and his children and carries a truck and he just goes to an empty place. You will find wheat there. But whoever sowed January, February down to April is smiling right now because he knows it's harvest time. Brothers and sisters, I pray for us. May God kill greed from our life. This attachment to money, listen. This many people think wealthy people are the ones who are attached to money. It's a lie. Wealthy people in the kingdom have become wealthy because they have conquered it. Your seed is an instrument that creates your future. Hallelujah. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. I'll never forget a gentleman who sent me a text. He sowed a seed. I remember it was when he sent me the text. Truly speaking, I remember. They sowed seeds and I was opening the envelopes. Most times it takes, it honestly takes a while. Maybe some days before I even open the envelope to see what is there and pray on it. And I opened the envelope and I saw five naira and a letter. The guy said this five naira was his Isaac. I know you will laugh and say, hey, hey, this stupid boy, no. I respected that because that, that thing I knew will create a harvest. And the guy, I opened it and wrote some things like that. And then I just felt led to pray for him. Do you know it didn't reach two weeks? The guy sent me a text and said, I have never in my life seen favor like this. Five naira. It's not about the money. It's about the heart. Somebody was tired of where how many jobless people have not shown anything and they keep moving around with CV. What must tell you the devil is fighting you? You carry a seed and say, God, please. I'm married with three children, no job. This mockery must end. I drop this and I tie it to my job. And then praise around that seed. Praise around the seed. And your brothers and sisters say, so this is what they are teaching you. This is how these stupid men of God keep eating your money. And all of a sudden, the heaven opens. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. You are praying to buy land. Oh Lord, please give me two million naira to buy land. I now have 150,000. Just top it up for me. And God says, you mustn't buy it. Just learn. Let me show you. And all of a sudden, someone stands up and blesses you. I think it was you, Jimmy. I was showing you. Was it yesterday? I was showing him the documents of a property that was given to me recently. I said, God, what is this? What is this? For as long as you sow, whether you like it or not, the law is that you must reap. So if you have not sown anything, stop, stop saying, God, where is my harvest? And he said, what, what are you saying? A woman who does not take in. Is she expecting a child? No sir. No sir. She do seasons of breakthrough in your life. Your seed is a weapon. Not just your prayer. Your seed is a weapon. Your seed is a weapon. One mama called me one time. I was led by God. Honestly, I felt so. I didn't know how to talk to her because she sounded like an elderly woman. And she was praying for divine financial intervention. I said, Mama, please, I want you to sow a seed. Not to me. I, I, I would never have the effrontery to tell that woman to sow into my life. I'm sure that woman will be older than my mother. I said, please try, connect with a seed. And the woman said she doesn't have anything. I said, it's not true, Mama. There is something you have. What do you do? She said she farms yam. I say carry four or five tubers of yam. Find any church. I said which church is close around your area? She said there's living faith. I said go there. Find four tubers of yam. Tie it and be praying. Singing any song in your language you know. While you march to the pastor's, um, uh, what do you call it? The pastor's office. Whether the pastor is eating the yam or not is not his business. Only a stupid man of God resents.